welcome back to the shed. Now, if you're a regular follower of my channel, then you will have seen some of the engines in the Wigwag family. And I thought I had just about exhausted all my ideas to expand or evolve this engine any further. But, thanks to the members of the Wigwag Facebook group, I am occasionally inspired by new engine designs that the group members come up with. This happened with the Wigwag triple chassis engine back in 2021, which was inspired by Mark Cormack and once again, a completely new engine concept has been devised. Chris Shanks posted on the Facebook group this engine, based on a standard design for the horizontal wigwag, but with an extended or stretched chassis to give a longer framed engine, and I was struck by just how lovely this new concept was. This inspired me to create a stretched version of the engine for my own collection of wigwags, so based on Chris's idea, I drew up a new set of plans for the stretched wigwag, which not only had an extended chassis, but also the cylinder, piston and stroke length stretched out to extended dimensions. The new cylinder length is 100mm long, but retains the other original dimensions of the wigwag design. The piston has been extended to 30mm, and the pivot point is now set at an extended distance of 140mm from the axle, and the ports are set out on a 20mm radius from the pivot, which is 8mm further than the original plans. Now Chris had mentioned in his stretched wigwag build that due to the extended length, the cylinder oscillation had been reduced, resulting in the ports becoming very close together. So I wanted to keep the input and exhaust ports at approximately 6mm between centres to keep to the original wigwag port configuration. To help achieve this, the distance between the pivot and the ports was increased to 20mm, and the crank disc diameter was also increased from 40mm up to 50mm diameter to allow the crank pin offset distance also to be extended, giving increased cylinder oscillation. To get the dimensions required to ensure the 6mm spacing of the ports, I needed to calculate the crank pin offset position to find the correct oscillation of the cylinder port position in relation to the overall stroke length travel of the piston. I did a few sketches and some mental arithmetic and this resulted in giving me the ultimate answer. The answer to life, the universe and everything. Forty-two. Yes, yes, I thought it over quite thoroughly. It is, it's forty-two but all I really needed was the length of the stroke. Pah! Who needs seven and a half million years to come up with that? So, 42 was divided and the crank pin set at 21 millimetres from axle centre. This allowed the port positions to be approximately six millimetres. As usual, the engine needed a bit of fettling and fitting to get it to run smoothly, and instead of using the standard brass turned wigwag flywheel, I opted to use this Willesco cast alloy spoked flywheel, which I had in stock. Now it's a little lightweight, and I could do with a heavier flywheel to help it run slower, especially as it has a much longer stroke to return the empty cylinder, so I may replace this with a cast iron flywheel in the future. Also, as it was pre-drilled, it does have a degree of wobble, but it'll do for now. Now I really do like the styling of the spoke flywheel, as it gives it a look of a classic horizontal steam engine. And although it is still fundamentally a wigwag design, it certainly adds that extra touch of styling. And to add to this, I wanted to include a pressure regulator directly to the engine, as Chris had done in his design. I bought this little globe valve as it had the styling that I liked, 
and it was threaded for quarter 40 model engineering standard to suit my 1 8 inch pipe fittings. This was fitted to a short piece of brass to set it to the required height from the base and a hole drilled through for my air connection pipe. Now the valve isn't great at actual regulation as I think it's possibly more of an open or closed valve but with a small precise adjustment of the wheel it can be used to successfully adjust the engine speed. I may take this apart and see if I can modify it for better regulation. Well that just about sums up this engine, another successful and quite beautiful addition to the Wigwag family, all thanks to the inventive members of the Wigwag Facebook group who share their ideas and engines, without whom I'd be stuck for ideas and inspiration. If you enjoyed seeing this little engine, take a look at my Wigwag playlist here on YouTube, where I have videos of all my Wigwag engines that I've built over the last few years. And if you feel you would like to have a go at building one of the Wigwag engines, take a look at my website, where all the plans for the engines can be downloaded for free. I shall add some links at the bottom. And of course, if you find this whole Wigwag project interesting, or feel that you have a unique design to inspire a new Wigwag engine, why not join the Wigwag Facebook group for regular updates and fascinating contributions from all the members there. And as always, thanks for watching.